What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Boy John 25. Every time I'm going to do my WWE SmackDown review on highlights, you guys can do hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. SmackDown was a decent show. It was not that great, it was just decent for what it was. They started with Pyro. Welcome to the Thunder Dome. No mention of the the Amy the Amway Center. Vince McMahon came out. Actually, he was already in the ring. The virtual fans were all all, all were all the ring. Vince says he never see it coming at SummerSlam. Then the lights started to started going down, and the Fiend came out. Vince didn't move as the Fiend made his way to the ring with a stick new. Thunder Dome entrance. Bray appears and Bray approaches Vince and they just stood there for a moment. The Fiend started laughing and then Braun Strowman came out. It's like, Tim, I agree with you what you just said. It's like, why was the Fiend out there in the first place along with Mr. McMahon? You let me know down below in the comments. But let me continue. Then Retribution surrounded the ring and there were more than ever before. Braun and Bray smiled at each other and then the lights went out after Bray waved. Then lights came back on and Braun was all alone. The Retribution got in the ring and mounted Strowman. There were at least a dozen of them but Braun finally went down. Finally the locker room em empty led by Big E. The superstars in Retribution continued, continued brawling. Then the hills come down, they were all brawling, and not one superstar thought to take their mask off. Alright, um, why did Miz, Tim, answer this question down below in the comment section. Why did Miz was, why did Miz came out late after the brawl was over? Don't get me wrong, Tim, but I, I, I just want answers. But don't get me wrong. Alright, let me know down below in the comment section why I just said Tim. But anyway, let me move on. Big E versus Sheamus. Decent. This was a pretty good match for what it was, but I ain't gonna lie. But let me read it off anyway. They started this match, which was planned for later on, later on in the in the night. Sheamus beats she Sheamus beats Big E around the ring. WWE superstars remain at ringside looking for another retribution retribution attack. Sheamus hits the Irish curse backbreaker for a two, and the light started to flick flicker again. When we got back from commercial, Big E started hitting German suplexes. Big E hit a splash, and Sheamus out got of a big ending. Sheamus went for a bro kick, but Big E, Big e ducked. Then Big E caught a knee to the face. Sheamus nailed, nailed Big E in the face a couple of times, and Big E got out of got out of white noise. Big E hit a Uranagi slam for for a two count. Big E caught a knee to the face when he tried for a spear through the middle ropes. Then Big E blocked a chest chest chop for Sheamus, from Sheamus. Big E caught a post and then Sheamus hit the white noise. Corbin nailed Matt Riddle at ringside for for some reason. They then they started brawling just just as Sheamus was about to hit a bro kick. Sheamus was distracted. Big E got a roll up and won. That was cheap way to get a win on Big E that should mean a lot more than it did. The win of the match, Big E. They, looked up, they, they took us back to the trainer's room where Jeff Hardy was where in, in pain. He was getting treated and it looked like it was his ankle. Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura versus the Lucha House Party for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. This, this, this was like, you know... It was it was decent, decent tag team match. It says um, okay, M Malik, uh, Metallic and Cesaro started out, and Cesaro caught Metallic off the ropes and power bombed him down. The Miz and John Morrison were watching backstage. Nakamura took ta took the tag and then he and then he worked with Metallic for a bit before he tagged in Cesaro again. Cesaro tried to do a move from the second rope, but Metallic, Metallic stopped him. Then he, then he hit a runner off the top on Cesaro that sent him flying. Kalisto cheered on a ringside and Lance Dorado, 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 Dorado took the tag. Then Dorado hit a crossbody block and Shinsuke missed a splash. Dorado kicked Nakamura and then he jumped near Nakamura 
and flip down, flip down the ring. They trade kicks, and Dorado hit hit three moonsaults for a two count. But Metallic hit Cesaro with a splash off the top, and then Nakamura hit an end of rear exploder suplex. Nakamura kicked Metallic again, then lands the voice the King shouts out, and he hit a springboard stunner. Then Cesaro took the tag, took the took the tag, and he had to kick out of a roll up pin, pin up, roll up pin. Then Cesaro rolled Dorado up. With a go gorgeous reversal for the win, Cesaro is seriously so good. The winners, the winner of the match is still your SmackDown Tag Team Champions, Cesaro and Nakamura. The Lucha House Party had a scrabble, ma uh, square scrabble after the match. They revealed and displayed footage that AJ Styles caused Jeff Hardy injured. Injury. Then Styles cut a promo backstage on Hardy. Styles walked up on Banks and Bailey. Then they toasted their their titles. Mandy Rose was interviewed backstage by Kayla Braxton. She know saw 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 the um, home invasion and kidnap situation, kidnapping situation. Then she spoke directly to Sonya who wasn't wasn't there. Mandy asked to put this all behind us and choose to see the good in you. Those two will fight on Sunday with their hair on the line. The golden role models. Okay. Um, Bailey and Banks came out. Corey Graves was in the ring with them. Bailey cut him off to put them over. Graves asked if they were Im implying that Oscar can't beat them. Bailey said everything they do is for a reason. They That's why they have all the gold. Corey brings up Kari Sane and how Oscar might want to beat them both up for for Kari Sane leaving. Bailey said there is nobody in the locker room who can touch them. Then Naomi came out. She wanted to face both of them. Naomi versus Sasha Banks. And um, this match was not that bad. It was pretty good for what it was. Banks and Bailey must be Naomi and whoever beats Naomi quickest gets to face Oscar second at SummerSlam. How the you know what is is this Naomi getting better? Banks lay 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 and knees to Naomi in the corner and softened her up and then Naomi landed a springboard kick to the back of Banks. Head head as she was draped over the top rope. Banks tried to roll Naomi up but got a two count. Then Banks took Naomi down quickly into the bank statement for the submission at three minutes and thirty nine seconds. Alright. Bailey versus Naomi. This match was quick. Bailey Wester rushed the ring and landed a knee to Naomi's head immediately. Then Bailey started pummeling Naomi and stomping on her. Then Naomi re returned fire with a rear view and won. Banks was way happy about this. All right, the winner of the match, um, Naomi. Oscar came out and cut a furious promo. Then they piped in crowd noise when she said. Her catchphrase, Oscar rushed, rushed the ring and barely left as Banks was, left on the ramp. Sonya Deville was backstage. Dana Brooke ran up, ran up and said, I'm sorry for everything you went through this week. Then Deville slapped, slapped the crap out of her and, and said, it's nothing I can't, I can't handle. That, that was intense. Deville is coming into her own, coming here, coming here on, on her, on her own here. Sonya Deville speaks. This was a fantastic promo by Sonya Deville. She made them cut the music. She isn't backing down from SummerSlam. She doesn't understand what Manny wants because she's going to end up facing her at SummerSlam. Then Sonya said that say they raised the stake. It's also a no disqualification match in the loser leaves WWE. She realized hair or no hair, she's sick of looking at her face. Nikki Cross caught a promo saying that Alexa Bliss has been different. Um, AJ Styles versus Jeff Hardy in a in a Connell time match. This match was not that good. But how can AJ Styles lose to Jeff Hardy? That was not even not even 100%. All right, AJ Styles went right for Hardy's knee and keep it kept kept at it. Hardy keeps selling his knee. This was the story for the first few minutes and continued. Styles keeps stomping on Hardy and then he fought back fought back a bit with a jaw jacker. Then Hardy lifts Styles over the ropes into to the apron. But Styles fell 
to the to the floor. Styles pulled Hardy to the floor and they cut to commercial. Styles kept working on Hardy and then Jeff re returned fire with a face buster. Styles came back with a Pele kick. Hardy tried to do a whisper in the wind, but his leg went out on the top rope on Proto and he fell. Hardy returns fire on Styles and hit him with the shot to the to the gut off a springboard. AJ went for a Styles clutch, but Hardy hit him in the face with his knee brace. Then he hit a twist of fate and climbed up to hit a swan time bomb and win the IC title. The winner of the match and your new Intercontinental title, Jeff Hardy. AJ Styles was back as he was yelling at Joseph Parks. Firefly Funhouse. Um, Bray told us that he loves us. Uh, then, he then he said, love can be a terrible thing. It's just way, just a way to trick you into um, bundle, bundling. It can cause an angel to crash him down with broken wings. Too much love can turn sunflowers into a wasteland. Then Bray, then Bray started listening to his hurt glove. Then he then played a little clip of Bron and Alexa played by Huskis, the pig, the pig boy, and Rambling Rabbit. It almost got TV 14. Way, why it stopped them and said that's not how it went down. Huskis says he's a method actor. Rambling, Rambling got lost in, got lost in the moment. Bray Wyatt says the Fiend can't wait to get his hands on Braun. Then Braun Strowman jumped Bray Wyatt in the Firefly Funhouse and beat him down in his safe place, safe space. Then he dragged Bray Wyatt off. Cut to commercial. When we come, when we come back from commercial, Cole and Michael Cole and Corey Graves were trying to explain what what they just saw. They moved to the back of the army. What says? Amway Center while calling it the Donner Dome the entire time. Brian choked slam. Brian then choked slam while off the loading dock while the referee were trying to get him to stop. They acted like this was very serious. There, there was no blood. There was no blood, but why wasn't moving? They, they immediately had an ambulance there. Imagine that. Then they load up right. The ambulance left, but it. Left, but the ambulance left. But then it stopped. It, but it stopped. It started back. Adam Pierce tried his best to keep stunning, shouting, and selling this. Then the ambulance opened up, and then the fiend was standing there. He started laughing at the show, and that's the show. SmackDown itself was decent, I must say. But TM, I gotta agree with you on one thing. The retribution reminds me of Baby Kids plus. It just reminds me of Baby Kids plus Phineas and Ferg. Like, you know what I'm talking about, Tim. It's like, why Retribution keep flicking this, the light switch on and off? I'm tired of it. The Retribution starting to get annoying. You know what I'm saying? I got to give you credit what credit's due, Tim. I know you're watching. I know you're laughing. So, um, the Retribution reminds me of Baby Kids and Phineas and Ferg. Phineas and Ferg times 20. It's like, Phineas and Ferg trying to just do something, like build up stuff, and then... And then Candace is going to get ready to tell on Phoenix the Ferb. Then a few moments later, Candace brings back their parents. And everything dis right before everything disappears, you see Phoenix and Ferb and Perry the Platypus just leaning on the tree, just chilling in the shade. Like, Tim, do you, do you agree with me what I just said? Let me know down below in the comment section. But anyway, before I wrap this video up, I got to do um, NXT TakeOver 30, which is tomorrow. And then SummerSlam. Review WWE SummerSlam review and highlights. I know I got to do that review, but the pay per view at SummerSlam, I'm not excited. But the two matches, look, the two matches I'm looking forward to is the Universal Title and the WWE Title at SummerSlam, and that's that. I don't care about nothing else. But anyway, if you guys enjoy my WWE SmackDown review and highlights, drop a like, drop a like on this video, subscribe to my channel, comment down below what you guys think of SmackDown because the Smack because SmackDown itself was a decent show. But this your boy, um, this your boy Bebo John 25. If I get to 3K subscribers, I will do a 3K shoutouts video on my channel. So make sure you guys be on the lookout for that. But make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications every time I upload a video. Anyway, but this your boy Bebo John 25. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow on my NXT Takeover review, NXT Takeover 30 review and highlights. 
talk to you guys later, and I'm out of here.